Welcome back to Sussex Farms for episode 12 with me, Mr Sealy P. It's 12.07, I'm down at the sheep and I've been moving the uh, pallets around. That one's nearly full, that one will be moving in a moment. I went up with the low loader to the store. I bought a bucket, which I said I was going to do for cleaning out the feed area. Now listen, I know it seems to be at the moment, I'm not quite sure why, everything I post, everyone's second guessing every single decision I make. Bottom line of it is, and I keep saying this, play the game however you want, and, and that's fine. Um, I am aware there are multi a multitude of ways of doing everything. I mean, there are so many different ways of doing things. I know you can put wood chips down, you can put uh, straw down, you can put all sorts of stuff in the feed trough areas so that you don't have to clean them out. I, t I totally understand that, of course you can, but part of doing what I do is cleaning out the animals. That's what you do. So, uh, you know, it's part and parcel, just, you know, I appreciate the comments, and, and I think people which I, uh, most of the time assume I don't know, and I've said this before, if I don't know, I'll thank you absolutely massively, and I'll probably give you a shout out if it's something that I didn't know before, and I was, I'm a bit kind of, wow, that's amazing, I'll, I'll let people know. That being said, the CSZ pack from DD Mod Passion. I've decided to get the bag lifting bit of kit. Now, one thing I've found, and I don't know why it's done this, this is the skid steer loader version of it, and it's attached, but it's attached higher than the attachment point for some reason. Which brings me on to this. I had a comment left by DD Mod Passion on that video saying that there is a conflict between the CSZ pack, the updated version of the CSZ pack, and the John Deere Cotton Harvest DLC. Um, which is causing some problems. Now, I think the problem I didn't put across properly in the video, I had some issues with the bales, and I think that's what the problem is with the auto-load forks. They auto-loaded fine, but the same as an auto-load bale trailer, if you auto-unload, like the unload here, if you do it on the trailer, it turns them, I've said this so many times before, from an ethereal bale, which kind of is there but not, it has no weight or substance into a proper bale so if you unload here it then becomes a solid object boom it's there so when you unload here with the the forks um the auto load forks in the csz pack it makes them real so you can drive around with them on the forks no problem at all it makes them real when you kind of have to unload them um manually then because they've got weight and substance at that point it just means it unloads them onto the forks i don't know if i'm making myself clear i hope i am um, but there is there is a mod conflict at the moment. Um, I don't know if DZ Mod Passion is working to resolve that, or whether it's just going to be a case of if you want to run the updated CSZ pack and use those particular forks, you may have to disable or not use the um, Cotton Harvest pack, possibly. Um, but anyway, all that being said, and I thought I'd mention it because at the end of the day, you know, the comments were left, and I'm all about sharing information. So, what I've been doing is moving these around. Now, you have to be careful with using these, and it may mean that when I start moving stuff around, I'll I'll do it a little bit more carefully. If there is a pallet here, directly behind it, so I've got two pallets, one there and one there, this will pick up both. Because if I go right up to this pallet and drop that down, like so, and then click it, it will pick up the pallet behind it as well. If you only want to pick up the front one, you have to kind of come a little bit further back, and I know it's not as realistic, but do it like that and then you'll only get the front one if you only want to lift the front one like i say the, the realism side of things for that particular bit if i do it like this there's absolutely nothing wrong with this at all come forward a bit hook my straps on and there we go that's way way easier than using pallet forks and fiddling around and sometimes i'm going in sometimes i'm not and you know I've said it before, there's a lot of finesse involved and the game physics aren't always perfect. It doesn't always work how you'd like it to. This is a much quicker, cleaner, crisper, easier way of doing it. But you might want to leave spaces between your stacks of, of pallets or whatever you're doing. Because, like, for example, when I do this one here, I'll show you what I mean. Like I said, consumer advice. You know, if I find things out, I'll let you know. That's generally what I do. So if I do this now, uh, it will do the double stack as well. It was a handy bit of kit. Like so. But it will try and lift everything. All of those. All four, because they're quite close together. If I come back a bit further, and again the realism side of things goes out the window with this bit. 
I can just... Oh no, it's still trying to do that on my other one. Oh yeah, so you need to be careful how you actually stack them. You might want to leave a little bit of space between each stack, like top to bottom, have a gap between those two, and probably side to side to have a gap between stacks all the way around. That way, if you are going to use a tool like this, you can quite easily manipulate them around. So what I might do, actually, off screen, I'll grab the pallet forks. I'm just going to shift them about a little bit to give myself a bit of room. So when it comes to actually loading up um, trailers, when you all your wall pallets are ready to go, I'll do that. This thing will make life so much easier. Um, but I just thought, I'd, yeah, that's what I've bought. Like I say, for some reason, it's not attaching there where it should do. It's clicking above. But I'm still going to use it, so uh, that's, that's 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 it. I thought I'd mention it. Right, onwards. We've got work to do. I'm going to take these back up, so we'll go across the field. I just wanted to move those pallets out of the way as well, because they were on the grass field. And if it gets to a point where I want to do something... Um... Oh, that was a thing as well. On here... I didn't have grass showing. Uh, thank you, Wombleway. If I put that on now... Mm, I don't think... I still don't think it's going to show me the... So it's showing me my grass... Growth... No, still haven't got a fertilising state on there. Hmm. Oh, I need to lime as well. The edges of, the, of my field that I uh, extended. Didn't even notice that before. Yeah, so it's still not shown as fertilising. Someone did mention that. I might grab a weeder, run a weeder over it. Maybe the Scaraflex or something like that. Give that a go. And then with relation to the herbicide sprayer... Um, Again, thank you for all the comments. Uh, a lot of people mentioning the fact that you need to be in a new ground state for the worker to work. I have tried it in all different ground states. I still cannot get a worker to work with the herbicide sprayer. I don't know why. Whether it's just a problem I'm having. Um, but I can't seem to get it to work. And thank you to all those people saying that I don't sound the same. I've still... <laughs> Still got a stinking cold. I just cannot seem to shift it. Right. First things first. We've got people around the map that can't breathe. They need air. I know there's a difference between the two. But we are going to do an air run. And then with the money we make and what we've got already, we're going to get some cows. Dairy air. So. Inwardly, I'm smiling to myself. But can't beat those dad jokes. So, the differences between tankers, and I will again, again, I'll try and again, 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 I will try and help out. I apologise if I seem a little bit balmy, I'm just, I'm really enjoying playing. After the Christmas break and all the insanity of everything and all the busyness, it's just nice to be back doing, you know, Right, this tanker here is the one that Jim puts in under miscellaneous. It's a 30,000 litre tanker. Um, we go along to miscellaneous. It's right at the very end. There. Got a smaller one and a large one. Now this will do air as well. On this map you can transport air. This one will do it. Like it or loathe it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But it, it, this will transport air. The one by Missy B which is here. A few people are still commenting saying, oh, hang on, where, where's that tanker come from? The MTU-60 um, will do 60,000 litres. It will do everything else, but it won't do air. Um, so you can do all the other things. Now, the thing with this is, this comes in a pack. I did mention it before, but I, maybe I wasn't very really clear. Uh, under uh, placeables. If we scroll across until we get to them, Right, so here, placeable silo, liquid fertiliser and herbicide by Missy B. Um, so what you need to install is the placeable liquid fertiliser and herbicide tanks pack. And it'll have that picture there. That's what you need to install. And the tanker comes as a bonus in that pack. But 
A lot of people are searching for it and not finding it because for some reason in the mod hub it's been put in as Miss By, not Missy B. So if you're typing in Missy B, it might be why it's not coming up in your mod hub if you're doing a search, um, but it is under Placeables, Liquid Fertiliser and Herbicide Storage Tank. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you type in Miss By, it'll probably come up. But that's where that tanker comes from. This one is Jim's one. This is an air tanker. We're going to go and get some air. What I'm going to do, I'm going to buy cows because I want to get the ball rolling on them now because it's going to take a while before they're ready to produce milk. They need to give birth to their first young, which will take nine months. So the sooner I get the ball rolling on them, the better. Now, I don't have anything ready or prepared and we're not in the right season to cut grass properly and make hay and all that kind of stuff yet. Um for total mix ration I don't have any straw or anything like that we will do so I'm gonna buy TMR just to start myself off and literally I mean like I say farmers do it that you know if you're off season you might run out there might be a hundred and one reasons why or you might not just be a person that makes it yourself you might always buy it in the same as you may buy in cow feed you may not provide your own so I'm gonna buy some in hopefully just to tide me over till we're at a point we can make our own um, so yeah, you can do it from the buying it in silos, but Jim has a, a buy point here on the map too, which is what we're going to be taking advantage of. So hopefully, I've done this right again this time, I've come to the right place rather than last time where I went to the wrong place. If we pull in just here, purified air. Always remember, turn those pumps on, otherwise you can't get stuff. Let's jump in, click on that. We would like some air, please. It will cost money. It will cost a fair bit of money compared to other things, but we should... <laughs> he says, we should make that back. Uh, I hope so. Thirty-two thousand liters. Did I say thirty thousand liters? Sorry, I meant thirty-two thousand. Thirty-two thousand liters. Twenty grand. This load is going out to the marina. We're going to go to the, uh, the the diving club, the scuba club. Still awesome. Love that. I may well do a maltings again, like I did on FS seventeen. I might stick a building on there. It's mildly frustrating, but um, because I now have a PC, which I will be using for editing, I just need to learn how to do it, um, <laughs> which I will do at some point. Um, I have had a look at the game, uh, FS19, on PC, and it's more bonkers, man, but very, very cool. Um, there's a mod in there for a distillery, and there's also one for a brewery, which is converted from the distillery one. A well-known branded brewery. And you can provide all the stuff for, for brewing. I think it's absolutely great. So. Am I going to be doing Let's Plays on it? Possibly. I did say I would more likely to stream on PC. If I can get my streaming set up at a point where it will work. And I can do it without being disturbed. Thank you. Um... I'm going to continue to do my PS4 Let's Plays and PS4 Mod Reviews and all that stuff. Um, but what I might do, because I've got an Elgato, courtesy of a very good friend of mine, Mr. Dalit JD, I will be able to record from my PS4 onto my PC so I can edit on the PC. At the moment I edit using Share Factory. I know a lot of people do ask me what do I use to edit. I do edit using Share Factory on the PS4 at the moment. However, I do have the ability to record and edit from my PS4 onto the Elgato and then Elgato, Elgato and then um, edit on PC which I should be able to do so we should be able to make some money now hopefully it's more than it cost us it cost us 20 grand 
how much are we going to make on the air? These people need to be able to breathe underwater, you know. Oh, look, the shark's coming. Oh, sorry, we'll keep kind of keep an eye on that. I'm like an excitable child. Ice going to the water, look. Typical, come back around in a minute. How much did we make? 50 grand, so we made 30. It cost us 20, we made 30 grand on delivering. It's gone. It's gone under the water, but I think it's going to come round. It does a loop round and it comes back up out of the water. There's a really cool... I mentioned this when I did the first look map tour. and I know it's kind of off topic a little bit and not farming, but it's just... Ever since I watched Jaws when I was a kid, I was terrified of, you know, swimming and all sorts of stuff for a long, long time. And any game where there are sharks terrifies me. I, I don't know why, just, I know they're games, and, but it's that whole th concept, that whole thought. Where is it? It's going to come back around in a minute. I'm going to miss it, aren't I? But anyway, that said, there's a lot of these places now which are doing, um, like, themed cinemas so you can go and watch certain films a lot of classic ones and cult films and stuff with a theme my daughter's going to a stranger things one there it is a stranger things viewing and it's all themed and you dress up and you know that is quite scary there's one for jaws and i can't remember whereabouts it is they do it but the it's like a big open cinema with a massive screen but the screen is on the edge of a lake and you watch the film on rubber rings on the lake, on the water. Can you imagine watching Jaws sitting on the water in a rubber ring? Oh, there's no way. I'd have a heart attack. I just, I just couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't bring myself to do it. Anyway, we made a bit of money on the air. We can take air up to where we get our free water from if you want to. There's an air place up there as well. Which I suppose we could do. But we're alright, we made a little bit of money on that. Just to show you, it's not something I'm going to be doing regularly. You know, I'll do it every now and again, possibly. Um, we haven't had any more money from the greenhouses. They have run out of manure and water. So with the money we've got at the moment is the money we've got. I'm going to head back and um, park this up. And let's sort out getting some cows. Now I might... Again, we've got this dilemma, and it's, it is a dilemma. For things like pigs, um, it's a bigger problem. If you're going to do these things long term, especially with pigs, where you might be transporting them around from pen to pen and that kind of stuff, buying yourself a livestock trailer is well worth doing. Because for every pig you buy or sell, there's a £100, Euros or dollars fee for transportation. If you're only making 400 on them, or if you buy them for 200 that makes them 300 for each one to bring over. So you're better off having a livestock trailer. Like I say, if you're going to be moving around a lot, you need it. For cows, they cost a bit more to buy. And to buy a livestock trailer for them, you might only use it once or twice. Is a lot of money to spend. It actually works out cheaper to just have them transported. So... I could lease, I might lease one, it might just be easier doing that, I might just lease a livestock trailer. We'll look at the leasing fee, we'll have a think about how many cows we're thinking of getting. And um, I need to weigh up whether or not... I mean that's what it all comes down to, you know, you're, you're weighing up, is it worth it? But realistically, on a map like this, where you know you can make money, there are certain maps where it's hard, really hard to make money. And, um, you know, if you're going to be running on a hard economy setting as well, it can be even harder, obviously, to make money. But on a map where you know you can make money fairly well or fairly easily, uh, even if it's, there are a lot of fertilising contracts and they pay really well, like Washo, they paid out brilliantly the fertilising contracts then you know you can make the money back then it really doesn't matter it's actually not too bad leasing something because I know if I do another water run if I do the greenhouses if I do various different jobs I can make the money back no problem at all so we're going to whiz over to the cows 
I say I may well buy a weeder anyway. Or yeah, probably the I mean the Scaraflex is fifty something grand and I've got one of those on Geiselsberg and kinda swear by it now. It's quicker and easier to use fertilizer spreaders and sprayers and, and you know, all those kind of things because they cover the ground a lot better. Um Oh, yeah. Did I mention this? I'm trying to think if I mentioned this or not. It was commented on the fact that I'd mentioned I had OCD and um, it, it was mentioned that if I have OCD, how come I had the plough on backwards? Um, I was told a little while ago, I think I mentioned this a while back, that because this has got a three-point link either side, you can run it on the front of a piece of machinery or the back of a piece of machinery, whichever you want to do. But if you turn it round and put it on backwards, you can actually plough quicker. I haven't actually noticed that. It's potentially it did in the last time when I last used it, but I kept I kept hiring a worker and I would go off and do whatever. So I don't know if it did. So I kind of put it on backwards a few times because I was told it would plough faster. And, um, it still ploughs, front or back, so... Uh, right, cows, let's head over. Let's look at how much they are first before I even consider anything. Because we're mid-spring, and I bet if I check the economy... Page, which use just here, and we go down to cows. We are going to be going for Holsteins. Yep. Uh, I mean, they don't really vary a huge amount, you know, you know, honestly. They are at one of the highest points. Of course, they always are when I come to buying the animals. Um, but, that's pigs. Stops the wrong place. Cows are over here. We'll need to do a load of silage as well. We can buy silage, but I do want to do some. We'll need to probably buy another grass field. Right, that's where my straw goes in. Feed in here and water. We'll have to sort out the water trough. I can put a... We can place another one of the uh, water pumps. But... Holstein's... The Queen of Milk Production. 2008 per animal. Uh, and then there'll be a transport fee. So if I click on one now... It's 200 per animal. I'm trying to think how many should I get. At two grand a pop, I could get a few. Yeah, it's going to cost me a chunk, isn't it? If I get ten, it's two grand. It's got to be cheaper, at least the livestock trailer, hasn't it? Surely. Surely. Let's have a look. Uh, we want animals and animal transport, and we want to get the most in we possibly can. Four grand, so I'd have to get 20 f for it to be worthwhile me doing this. And this will hold how many cows? Twelve. <laughs> of course it does. So I'd have to do a couple of runs. You know what? Yeah, we'll do that. Let's do it properly. I'm going to grab the truck. Let's go and buy some cows. We'll get some Holsteins. Well, so I'm going to buy some TMR. I'll have to buy, buy some straw as well. I haven't got any. We've got nothing ready yet. My fields aren't ready. Now, if I was rolling round and I was doing... I, I might have decided like, I'm in my second year of farming and now I'm going to do animals. I might have a load of stuff already built up, but I want to get onto the animals as soon as I can to get the ball rolling on this so we can actually get them productive... Uh, um, kind of as soon as possible. I know when I say as soon as possible it's still going to be nine months down the line but while we've got some money sitting there before I decide to spend it on frivolous things I'm always up, grab a trailer, I will see you at the livestock market with a trailer, let's buy some livestock. Okay, this is not the Wilson, this is the Micheletto AM19. This actually holds 14 cows, the uh, Wilson only does 12. And it's also 3,400 lease rather than 4,000. So it's actually cheaper and better all round. So we'll do well, maybe a couple of runs, maybe more than a couple. To make it worth having as opposed to having them delivered. And it just comes down to how lazy you're feeling. If you want to have them delivered and you've got the money to have them delivered, have them delivered. 
if you want to go down a kind of I mean both are realistic you can have livestock delivered of course you can but if you want to do it yourself then do it yourself I'm going to come around the back way here I haven't been down this route since FS17 it was always quite steep down here but it cuts around the back from the store and brings me right the way down to the livestock market you can go to the sawmill as well I shouldn't really be coming down here in a, a truck and trailer combo but you can Oh, it's so much nicer driving around all these areas without loads of snow on the ground. <laughs> I have reset everything. And when I say reset, I've just changed the snow to one layer only. The concept of every time you get snowfall, more piling up and it being, you know, like I say, it being exciting and fun. And, and You know, it is to some extent. I'd, I like to have the snow, but probably for ease of use around the map and doing stuff, one layer might work out better. So, uh, right, what we need to do is open this up. So, L1 and down side, there we go. Open it up. Where are our cows? Over the other side. Now, when I did all my testing for animals, when I did the videos for Seasons 19 cows, I think I did 20 of each. Um, so we want uh, Holsteins Yep And confirm Right, we have them on there um, Interestingly uh, Just uh, just as, as an aside um, On PC I was having a bit of a fiddle around the other day Having a look There's an, an animal it's an animal extension mod. I can't remember the name of it now. Then basically what it does on this page here, it extends the information. And I said this right from the word go when we got FS19. There's no way of knowing how many you've bought until you look in your trailer or look into your actual animal pen. But on the mod you can get on PC, up in the top right hand corner, it will tell you, it will give you the number of animals that you're putting in. So you can keep a track of how many you're buying or transferring or doing whatever. It's such a simple thing, but you'd be amazed how much difference it makes. It just makes life so much easier. Because I'm pretty sure, again, I might have imagined this, but on 17, didn't you used to say in the bottom right-hand corner how many animals you had in the trailer? Or did I dream that? Again, could have just been one of my... My wild fantasies. Not that I dream about farming simulator all the time, you know. But a lot of the time. So, back way round. So these will obviously, like I say, they'll need water. I'll put the pump in, but I will add water in as well. I've got plenty in storage when I've done runs. So what I can do here, if you want to, you don't have to. You can cut through. I know Jim did say to me he left this in here, because a lot of people do like to... You can cut right the way around the back if you don't want to go through the tunnel, but you can, can come into the back of the farm up here. Just saves going all the way around. Not I say all the way around. It's not like it's miles, is it? But you know what I mean. Now these will need to be fed and watered before we go through the night um, because we don't want any problems. And we are in. I don't have to get out of the cab to do this. <laughs> I can do it from in cab, but... Okay. Ooh. We got cows. Cool. Now again, what you probably want to do, and you don't have to. It feels like now I'm at that point where it's almost like when you have to have legal disclaimers on on television programmes and, you know... If I don't say something, it'll get commented on. If I say something, it'll get commented on. <laughs> so I have to make sure I cover all eventualities to make sure everybody's fully aware of everything at every time. Um and that, you know, 
what I meant to say was this, that I did say was that, and... Okay, load number three. So... We have now got 42 cows. Three loads of 14. They're all in. And while I was doing that, I've made a decision. Uh, while I'm gone, we're going to get um, a fitter in to uh, put a, a water pump in. So we're going to have a water pump put in, but we are going to also fill the trough up to make sure they stay as healthy as they possibly can. That will just guarantee it won't run out if I forget at some point, which is highly likely for me. Um, I said I was going to buy TMR. I'm not going to buy TMR. I'm going to buy the... Um, constituent parts um, to make it so I'm going to buy some hay I'm going to buy some straw, I'm going to buy some silage I'm going to put it into the main silo I'm going to get myself a mixer wagon and I'm going to mix it myself I could just go and buy the TMR but again it, just, it seems like I haven't put any effort into doing that not that there's a huge effort into doing the other bits but then what I will do when I'm at a point where I can cut the grass and get everything ready to put chaff into here and we can fill this up and we can make our own silage and then what we'll also do is we'll cut all our fields we'll have straw for bedding and we'll be able to straw if I want to use straw for doing my total mix ration and then we'll cut all the fields we've got we might need to buy another grass field actually thinking about it um, if I buy another grass field then we'll be at a point where we can produce our own hay as well um, because there's always that risk that while you're trying to make hay you cut the grass and it might rain again or it might rot you might have a problem you might get to a point where you have a cold snap and you all of a sudden you're in a position where you've got no hay and again in the real world farmers can find themselves in those positions you might have all your hay stored and there could be a pipe leak or there could be a fire there could be a hundred and one different things that can go wrong to cause you to lose what you've got stored and you still have to then go and buy some so um, that's kind of what we're looking at. What I'm going to do is pull this over to one side. The company up at the store will come and collect that. I'm going to go and grab the trailer. I'm going to whiz down. Now you saw me buy hay before for the sheep. If you haven't watched the episode, I always urge people, if you're going to watch the Let's Play, watch from the beginning. If you jump in and this is your first episode you're watching, the Let's Plays kind of follow on whilst I'm doing particular things in each episode as well while seasons is on there's only a certain amount of farming you can do that sort of thing. this is farming but you know what i mean like field work farming my fields are seeded and ready to go at the moment there's nothing much i can do with them but i did buy hay um so what i'm going to do is go down to the same location and i'm going to buy straw so i'm going to show you that and then we're going to go buy silage because we can buy silage as well now what you can do as part of this, and, and Jim's done it on this map, and I think I showed it on the first look or second look because I did it in two parts, because there was so much to show. There's a place over by Big Daddy's, um, is it potatoes or sugar beets? Anyway, Big Daddy's farm, where you can sell chaff. So what you can do is you can put chaff in, that's what it kind of simulates. You sell the chaff, and then the machine at the other end, you can buy silage. So you can kind of simulate the fact you're selling it to somebody else to make the silage, then you buy the silage off them, if you want to. Um, so I can actually just go and buy silage from there if I want to. So we'll do that, but what I'm going to do is head down here, we'll sort this out. Like I said, while I'm gone, hopefully we'll get the pump put in, and I will do some water to make sure they're all good for that. Now they've got no feed in at all. If you put feed in before you put straw bedding in... Oh, I'm going to need bedding as well, aren't I? So I'm going to need a load of straw, aren't I? Uh, blimey. Yeah, if you put feed in before bedding, they'll start producing slurry because they haven't got straw yet. So you might get a little bit of slurry pop up on your thing. Um, then when you put the straw bedding in, they will produce manure only. If you put the straw bedding in first, once you've got the animals before the feed, then you will only get manure. So I know some people said to me they, they've got a little bit of slurry and then they've got straw that will be why um, it will do that so if we swing round to here hop out turn on the pump or the piece of machinery oh 
I love it. I love it. I still love it. I think it's brilliant. Let's buy straw. I'll climb up on the roof because I'll have a look. One thousand and fifty two for seventy nine thousand litres of straw. That will reset itself in a minute. So we'll take that up, that will go into the silo. We'll then go and grab some um, silage. Hay I've done before here, so I, I won't show me buying the hay. I, I will buy some hay, we'll put that into storage. Generally speaking, the mix I go for, and this is me personally. Uh, one part straw, one part, part silage, two parts hay gives me a nice mix into a feed mixer. So when you do it like that you need twice as much hay as straw and silage. So what I'll probably do is do another run of straw and have that as bedding. I'll do one of silage and then two of hay and then I should have what I need for a mix. I just use the straw to pad out the mix, it just makes the TMR go a bit further, that's me personally. You can make TMR just by doing silage and hay, you don't have to have um, straw in that mix if you don't want to, so that's your call entirely. Right, I'm going to take this back to the main farm silo and empty it, I will see you over at Big Daddy's in a little while. I'll, I'll show you me being there and then uh, we'll get some silage as well, then I'll sort out the hay. Don't know if I'm going to get on to making it all actually in this episode. I'm just thinking time wise. Because I need to buy a mixer as well, don't I? I don't own one yet. Right then, we're heading up. I'll show you what I mean. So, sell point for chaff is just there. Um, so you can put chaff in, you sell it at this point here, which kind of puts it into the machine, it gets dealt with, becomes silage, and here you can buy silage. I like the fact it's not just a buy-sell point, it's done in a way that, you know, it kind of you can see the process. Big Daddy's Poplars. Why did I think it was sugar beet? I'm not too sure. Big Daddy's Poplars, which is just here. You can buy this as a farm if you want to buy this as a farm. I did show this on the first look and stuff like that, but all the pallets that are here of poplars, if you want to use this for maybe placeables or put something in there, a shed or a vehicle, you can open this, go into the corner, that lovely pop, and all the pallets go, so you can put placeables or a shed or, you know, if you want to go down that route. Or not, it's it's up to you. So anyway, as I was saying, silage. So what we'll do, turn on the pump, like so. Now my cows have already taken water from the water pump, which has been installed now. Silage, there we go. So how much this costs for a full load. Um, if you open up this menu, it also says grass in the enclosure it's automatically taken grass out of the um, out of the enclosure. They've got a big enclosure of grass. Now it's only on 67% grown, it's not on fully grown yet. It's, it has taken some uh, to allow for the fact that potentially if I didn't give them any feed it has actually got something. So they are eating the grass out of the pasture. Actually this isn't going to be too expensive either is it? Nice. So we'll do one load of this. Then like I say, I'll go and get the hay but I'll do that off screen. Uh, we are going to need a feed mixer. I'm probably going to go with the Anderson again. Um, I know it becomes a little bit repetitive and there are a few different options available for feed mixers for doing TMR. Um, but the thing about it being that um, it's the biggest one that we've got. 2,223. That's not too bad. So that's that done. That pump will turn itself off automatically. Uh, but yeah, if we, if we look in... Um, here and we go into uh, animals which is just there um, we've got the knight RA there's the silo king there's a couple of modded silo kings uh, if we go into here we've got the um, uh, the VM 1702 SSF by Stroutman I think there's another 
pretty sure there's another mobile one. I mean, they're all mobile, but, you know, ones you drive yourself. There is a word for it, and I can't think of it off the top of my head at the moment. Um, but, yeah, the thing with this is, as you go along and you get to the Anderson pack, and you might not have downloaded the Anderson pack, and if you haven't, it's entirely up to you, you don't have to. But the larger one there will do 29,393 litres, which is the biggest one we've got at the moment on console. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm just personally you want to make as much as you can as quickly as you can i know i mentioned it a while back but the old um remember the pecon on fs 17 the pecon bigger uh, mega mamouette was it sixty four thousand liter oh that made life so much easier so there we go that's our silage um i'm like gonna go and get the hay Maybe I will. What I'll, what I'll probably do to end the episode, I think, we'll we'll buy ourselves an Anderson, we'll get it down here, and I'll mix one load and put it into. St Actually, I'll mix one load and go and feed them. Then what I'll do is, what, with whatever I've got left, I'll um, I'll mix up a load and I'll store it into the uh, silo. Another thing with with Jim's map, the the main farm silo will take everything, but there is also there is also there are also a few multi fruit silos and various different things that will do forage. Jim's uh, Mercury Farms shed pack has a silo in it um, which will do everything 500,000 litres and it's only 59 grand to buy so again it's a no brainer really he's you know, good at what he does um, I say yeah, he is good at what he does that's not the sole reason but I think he gives people what they want he, uh, not that every modder doesn't it's difficult to explain I know everyone saying, oh, you're only saying that because he's friends. No, not at all. I just, you know, I just find it useful and helpful. It doesn't break the bank. It's, you know, we've had multi-fruit silos, which are brilliant. You think it's a great idea, holds a load, and then it's 400,000 to buy. Realistically, if you're going to play the game any in any semblance of realism at all, um, it's going to take you so long to reach a point where you can afford a silo like that. But again, you can always cheat money in and do whatever you want to do. So, it's up to you. Right! I'm going to go and get some hay. Uh, and I will be back here in a little while when I've got the hay and uh, some more straw for bedding. And then we'll sort out getting ourselves a feed mixer. And we'll get our first load of feed for the cows mixed. Right, I'll try and be quick. I've leased the Anderson, not bought it, because I can use it for a little while, make a load of total mix ration, and then give it back. I don't need to have it sitting here doing nothing when I don't need it, so I've leased it. Money has gone down, though, because over in the background, I have bought the Joskin Scaraflex kind of weeder-type implement tool. I did try and use it on a couple of the fields. It doesn't seem to work at the moment, but it might be because the fields need to change state before that will work again. So, 29,000 litres. If I go over here to the silo I can put in all the ingredients and mix it up now I'm going to need to do a split the way I do it because I'm doing it the way I do it again so you can do it whichever way you want uh, I need 7,300 litres of straw and silage of each now this is, depends how quick this comes out so let's see 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 7, 3 that will do uh, I need the same for silage, so I need to take this up to 14.6 roughly. 13, 14, 5, that'll do. That's actually not too bad. Sometimes on own one washo, one of them, it might be the placeable actually, the placeable silo, the actual unload speed is so fast, it's hard to keep up with. So now the rest I'm going to fill up with hay. So it'll be double the amount should go in as hay. And it'll change colour. You've seen me do this before, maybe. There you go. Now we've got total mix ration. You might not have seen me do it before, but you might have done. Um, and there we go. Our first load of total mix ration is ready. Now, they may not take all of this. I've only got 42. Are they going to take 29,000 litres? Probably not. But the difference, again, with seasons being that rather than the feed lasting for six days, ten days, whatever it might be, it will only last about two days. Depending on the animals, depending on how much weight they put on, that's kind of a, a general term. Not quite sure what side this is on at the moment. Hang on just a moment. We are on tip side left. Of course we are. Let's go tip side right. Tip side rear is easier. 
actually I'm going to put it on tip side back it should still work um, because what I can do I can mix up more total mix ration the way I just did this use this for maybe an hour not even that mix up a whole load and then store it in the silo so what should happen now is there we go that comes up at the back in goes our total mix ration I say it's not going to take all of this but for unloading into the silo having it on tip side back is going to work out a little bit easier let's get some lights on um, I have put straw bedding in already, that was a bit of a game, I'll be honest, because trying to back the articulated lorry up here. I know this episode's been a lot of me driving around in the lorry with trailers, but it's been prepping for doing all of this. Um, when I do more of this straw and stuff, it's going to be smaller trailers. It's only because I did one big bulk load in the, in the first kind of go. It took all of it. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Seriously? It did. Took all of it. Uh, I need to put some more in. Wow, I didn't think it was going to take that much. Says, well, I suppose the estimated food required for 42 cows is going to be 245,000 litres over the course of, technically over the course of the year. Um, okay, well, I'll mix up some more. But that is our first load in. So now they've got water, they've got straw. We're going to be getting manure. And I've done my first load of total mix ration. You can do it with bales, you can do it with loose, you can do it from silos. There's a whole number of ways. And the only reason I'm doing it this way now, I want to get the cows going. And I don't have the resources yet because of the time of year it is. I've got nothing uh, ready to go. So, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you haven't got the notifications on, put them on. Because I'm finding, looking at my analytics, that a lot of people haven't got notifications on and they're not being notified when new videos come out and that kind of thing. Pop on that bell. Um, hit the like if you've enjoyed it. If you're a new subscriber, subscribe. That'd be f if you're a new subscriber, subscribe. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. That'd be fantastic. Um, if you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then of course, please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, Thanks for watching.